My issue is not with the decision. You might be right. Jalen Hurts might be a star in this league, might turn out to be a long-term uh, a star and, and, and starting quarterback for this team. But if we're having this the same discussion 10 years from now, I'll tell you the same thing. It's not about the particulars. It's about him ordering people what to do. Right. Okay. Because... So Jason's back, John McMullen with us, the three of us as well. And where to begin? Let's let's start local. We'll we'll branch out to DAC and everything. And what did you make of the timing of the conversation, reports, if you will, whatever term that can best be described, of what happened yesterday? This thing, I saw this on the bottom line as part of the lead for ESPN <laughs> in the second half of that Gonzaga yeah. St. Mary's game. So clearly this was a big story about Chris Mortensen saying that Jeffrey Lurie has already picked the quarterback. What was your reaction to all of that, John? Well, the timing is weird because why would you want to say that at this particular time? I mean, you want other teams thinking uh, as much as they want. Maybe you want a different player and you want somebody to jump up and head of you who wants a quarterback because they say maybe the Eagles will draft Justin Fields if we don't jump up. And that gives you a player that falls down the board. So just from a strategy standpoint, this is not a good decision by Jeffrey Lurie to make this known to, first of all, to, to tell his football people what to do. Even if he's right, that's, that's poor. That's a poor way to go about business. And secondly, to let it out, because everybody knows Chris Mortensen's plugged into Jeff. I mean, I'll be honest about it. So it's coming from the top. Uh, so he did it. And why he would want it out there? I have no idea. Well, what are the chances, in your view, John, that this could be Jeffrey Lurie throwing out a smoke screen? Because I saw a lot of discussion about that amongst the Eagles fan base, yeah. hoping that this was a smoke screen or saying that it was. I think it's it's you should hope that's what it was. But I don't think Jeffrey would do that to Chris, and I don't think Chris is dumb enough to fall for that. So I, I don't think that's the case. Well, uh, do we ever think that, all right, Jeffrey's been a, uh, an owner for over 20 years. He's I think he's a little tighter than, than what most people think as far as his knowledge of what's going on in the NFL and what he wants this team to be portrayed as. I just really think that he has a lot of um, – he has a lot of confidence because he was in with, you know, drafting Jalen Hurts. He has a lot of confidence in his kid's skills, and he really thinks that he can go forward and be his franchise quarterback, at least for now. So why wouldn't you help him the best way you can and, and go out there and, and, you know, I mean, it could work in the opposite way. Maybe he wants more draft picks. If, if a guy, if another team wants to come up and, and, and pick number six, he'll get more bang for the buck and put guys around this, this young quarterback to help him go, get better in the future. Well, um, my issue is not with the decision. You might be right. Jalen Hurts might be a star in this league, might turn out to be a long-term uh, a star and, and, and starting quarterback for this team. But if we're having this the same discussion 10 years from now, I'll tell you the same thing. It's not about the particulars. It's about him ordering people what to do. Right. Okay. Because he he's not a football guy. So if you think, you know, broken clock is is right twice a day, it's not going to be right consistently. That's my issue. So if anything, if he gets this right, it might. Open the floodgates. Yeah. It might say, hey, look, I'm a football guy. Let me make right. this decision, this decision, this decision. It's not going to be consistently good, bottom line. Just that to me is the issue. How much is this kind of become more and more prevalent over the years as Jeff has gotten older, as Howie has become more entrenched and untouchable. How, because it was probably wasn't always like this in the Tom Modrak days and Andy Reed uh, and Joe Banner, but I'm sure, you know, with departure comes opportunity for this owner to kind of worm his way in more. Not that, not that <laughs> he has to worm his way as the owner, but how much more prevalent has this become over the years up until where we are now? 
You know, it's interesting you bring that up, Jason, because after I wrote about this yesterday, uh, Mark Eckel uh, contacted me. He's the longtime uh, Trenton Times reporter who was there from day one mm -hmm. of Jeffrey Lurie. And he told me Jeffrey's always been like this, always, from day one with Ray Rhodes through Andy Reid. And I asked, I asked Mark straight up, when Andy got entrenched, he was this involved? And he said, yes, Andy just handled it better. Andy was a better politician. Andy ignored him at times and had the power to do that. So, so Mark says this has been going on for 26 years. Uh oh. Oh, you know. Oh, I. You know what? I, you're absolutely right. I can remember being um, mm -hmm. when I was playing with the Eagles, and it was Ray Rhodes who was the head coach, and he turned around and we were walking down the steps. Actually, I mean, this. We were actually walking down the steps. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. I was going to practice. I was going to you know get in the steam room. You know, another bout with pineapple vodka. But I'm walking down the <laughs> steps with uh, Ray Rhodes going in that morning. As I'm walking down the steps. Our, our one of our tight ends was walking up the steps. Jimmy Johnson was walking up the steps. So uh, as we're walking up the steps, I'm like, Jimmy, what's up, man? He, you know, he cussing. I'm like, what's up, man? And then he turns to Ray and Ray, like, Ray, what's going on, Jimmy? He said, what you mean what's going on with me? You just cut me. And Ray was like, wait, wait, wait. What do you mean I just cut you? Yeah, you just cut me. What? He, oh, no, no, come Lord, down the steps. It. I promise you. He said, come down the steps and let's talk about this. Well, they were actually listening I, they, they, well, this is the rumor that was going on in the locker room that the owner was listening. You know, Mr. Lure was listening to, um, you know, WIP it's and making decisions off WIP. I'm like, that can't be true. But <laughs> they ended up giving a contract to uh, the quarterback. I mean, um, the tight end from BYU. I used to call him Nod. I forget what his the name dude, was. That dude got cut Chad because Lewis? Angelo went on a rant. Yeah, Chad we Lewis. can't have a player named Jimmy Johnson. Yes, That's the Cowboys. I'm yes. being so serious. I mean, ow, it, it, it ow, just came ow. back to me. It just ow. came back to me. Oh my. And this yeah. is true story. story. True story. Thank you, Barrett. You just confirmed <laughs> yes. that yeah, this man's hands are everywhere. All right. Yeah. He's got grabbing well, I don't know if it's hands really, it's when it comes dad, to his football saying, team. That was that was the what was going on. We that's what we were saying as players in the locker room. But I know no. it's a true story. Us walking, me and Ray Rose walking down the steps, and Jimmy Johnson, the tight end, was on up the steps. That that happened seriously. Wow. I don't know if, if that was the case as far as them listening to what you know the radio, but that's what the word was from us because they had been talking about it that you know that Chad Lewis needed more reps, and you know that, that was just like a big topic, you know. And Jason Dunn, remember Jason Dunn? Yeah, you know, it's amazing, man. This is look like Tarzan, really play like Jane. You Why might have we just uh, you should have just had me on the sideline. I could have called the play. <laughs> <laughs> you may have just Barrett Brooks in this one story alone may have just inadvertently absolved Chip Kelly in that phrase of I didn't know when everybody yeah. asked uh, why they traded LaShawn McCoy. Maybe well, it was the owner. Right. That was literally was the, that's the truth, though. We were walking down and said, That's the truth. And he did not know that he had cut. Well, they had, they had cut Jimmy Johnson. I know that that's, that's the truth. listening to Sports Talk Radio. Uh, we are screwed. Wow. Oh, my goodness. On Mondays, I'm going to start interviewing myself after the games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the best part about you doing, Angelo, is to. I don't know if that's true. I'm, I'm just saying what the. the the beginning part I hope, was definitely I don't care true, true Barrett. It's too much fun to pretend yes. that it is. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm running with this. Are you kidding yeah. me? My, my, my fault, McMillan, man. I'm, my fault, now, man. Well, that's what Mark said as well. So you're basically confirming what he said. So my, my larger point, though, is from a head coach. So what do you need as an Eagles head coach? You have to be a politician. That's what you have to be. Right. And Nick Sirianni isn't that – uh, Doug Peterson wasn't that. Andy Reid was. Chip Kelly was. There's been one guy. You know, Andy's a Hall of Fame coach. It's not just about coaching. He knows how to deal with people. Hmm. But that's, that's, that's not – and I know nothing is ever fair in business and nothing ever fair in war, nothing ever fair in, in, you know, the NFL. But that puts you in an awkward position because you're going to put out a team that's not necessarily picked by you and, and, and put you in a position now that you're going to be – essentially um, graded over the players that you had nothing to do with. I mean, that's that's kind of mm -hmm. hard to go in and take a test when you don't even, you know, have the, the, 
the, the questions, but you expect to have the answers. I mean, that's tough. I mean, how do you do that as a head coach? And Sirianni, it's his first year. That's why we haven't heard anything from him. That's Where is why, this guy? Is he lost? Yeah. Where is he at? That's why, Barrett, a guy like Nick Sirianni is the only person that would yeah. take this job. Right, right. Yeah. That's exactly it. All right, we got to take a quick one. John, That's Hank the most said, telling thing. Yes, and, and let's build on that, too. Also, uh, I have a question that I threw out to the stream that I need, and maybe Harry would be the best person to ask here, but I think that the other three individuals can help me with this I as well. You, and also have an update on a story that we brought up about a week and a half ago. I think Harry, maybe Bar maybe both of them were on vacation. I'm not sure, but all of that coming up. We'll wrap the hour coming up next here on SportsMap Radio and phillyvoice.com slash the middle. All right. Yes. What are the chances you get to all the things you just dropped in that tease? <laughs> well, let's see. Let's see. All right. It was a great tease. There's no chance we get to 80% of it. Let's see. What, what did I tease here? All right. We're going to get to your comment about it being a telling thing. That, Write it down. All right. I'm, I am. What's the next thing I teased? Working in reverse. It's the update on the story. And I have an update on that story there. The question I put up on the stream, I need a good place to golf in May's Landing or maybe a little north of May's Landing. So that can happen as the show you goes. Seven things. I guarantee I we get to two. Boys. Blue Heron. That's, that's the only place I go. That's that's Jaws's place. So the Where is that? Twisted Dunes is good. I can't get into Dunes until too late in the day. McCulloch's? Is that open? What is it? Uh, McCulloch's Emerald Golf Links. It's similar. Not Todd McCulloch. No. <laughs> Todd McCullough, blast from the past. Wow. I was I was driving one day. I, I never forget this. I felt bad for the guy, but I was driving. You know the bridge where if you get off of seventy six and you're heading into Conchi, right by you know Harry knows that area. Jay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's the bridge that you cross over where it becomes Fayette. And now you're in technically down the, the, the middle. The middle. It's you called know. the Gonza Fort Peninsula Park. Looks nice. It's a nice green space. Yeah. Right, right, right. Just looks like, you know, what, what's um, what's the the park in, in the middle of New York? Central, Central park? park. Central Park. Yeah, yeah. Central Park. Yeah. <laughs> most famous park in the world. Right. Park. It's probably the most famous green space on the planet. The middle with Aton Shander, Barrett Brooks, and Harry Mays. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern.